Okay. Yeah, so, so my office door uh, looks like this, and it shows my schedule. And I also travel around Taiwan to talk to people and connect back to this space as well. Oh, okay. Cool. How many people are dropping by in the morning? Mm, they're very, very um, variable, but usually maybe 10 uh, every Wednesday. Oh. Um, which cup of coffee is mine? Uh, yeah, I think this one, this one I think is mine. Okay, that's yes. oh, good. You're going to be one too, right? That's right, you'll get one too. Please. Okay. Um, Yeah. Um, okay. Taiwan has a digital ministry. You so, what's yes. your job exactly? Okay. What do you do as a digital ministry of Taiwan? Okay. Do I do I talk to you or do I um, talk to the camera? Talk to me. Okay. Hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, and and do, if I introduce some concepts, do I introduce you to the front or to my screen? Um, I think better to you. To my screen. So I'll move it a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. okay, so as digital minister, uh, my work is to further the sustainable development goals through digital means that connect the economy, the society, and the environment together, and through enhancing reliable data, encouraging effective partnerships, and open innovation. And I wrote my own job description three years ago. And you so, did? Yes, yes. So I'll read you my job description. It goes like this. When we see the Internet of Things, Let's make it an internet of beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we hear the singularity is near, let us always remember the plurality is here. It's like a poem. <laughs> it is a poem. <laughs> but would you today like uh, write the same job yeah. description as uh, like three years ago, or would you change something? Yeah, I just wrote a new poem yesterday. And how yeah. does it go? The new poem? Yeah, the also new... job description. Yeah, right? it's also job description ish, and and it goes like this. Uh, it says, "Whirling ocean, beautiful islands, a transcultural republic of citizens." It sounds like those Japanese um, haikus. Yeah, What's the a, meaning of it? Yes. So, um, Taiwan, of course, um, is not only the land part of it. It's mm -hmm. also our surrounding ocean and sea that uh, has 10% of the total ocean biodiversity uh, on the Earth. And so it's always important to begin a view that it's not just on the land, but actually through climate actions and the sustainable goals to expand our horizons toward the, the ocean. And so that's why it's begun with growing ocean. And then it's not just one island, but many islands. We have the Pescadora Islands, the Orchid um, Island, the Green Island, and so on. And so um, it is not just enough to take care of Brabant as a human right on the main island. It is now also very important to get all the smaller islands also connected to uh, the broadband as a human right to make telemedicine, tele-education, and so on. Like, um, and transcultural means the freedom to uh, move from culture to culture, just like the freedom to move from a country to another. Because uh, starting this year, in Taiwan, we have more than 20 official languages. Uh, we have the Formosan languages from the indigenous nations. Um, we have the Taiwanese uh, Holok and Hakka um, and Mandarin and many other languages as well. And they're all equally official. And it's a new thing as of this year. And so to make um, machine learning, for example, learn not only from people who speak English or Mandarin, but also from all the different lineages, all the different cultures and traditions, and be able to um, communicate through those cultures. Uh, that's what I meant by transcultural. Uh, and a Republic of Citizens means that starting um, next year, our referendums are um, in different years uh, than the elections. Oh yeah, because yeah. up until now it always has been like the same year yes, as the elections. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, there used to be, um, I would say, capturing of agenda uh, of the deliberative uh, part of democracy by the representative part of democracy. Mm -hmm. 
but now because there will be an alternating years, there will be one year of presidential election and then one year of uh, national referenda and then one year of mayoral election and one year of national referenda. Oh, that's so, going to be like every year. Well, so it allows an um, entire year of deliberative action uh, outside of party politics and outside of representative politics. So it's a new design uh, that allows for more direct participation in agenda setting by the citizens without a political setting that captures them by the political parties. And so that's what I mean by Republic of Citizens or Mean War. Another meaning mm -hmm. in those few lines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but like as a digital minister, you know, are there like also what worries you the most? What worry I the most? Mm -hmm. Well, again, in order of sequence, right? If people don't care about the ocean, if they don't care about the climate, if people work on only furthering one interest at the expense of the others. So like economy, if it's done in a linear way uh, at the expense of society and environment, or innovation at the expense of social justice uh, and privacy and things like that, that would worry me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about like, the upcoming elections? Mm -hmm. What, what role does um, social media play in the elections? Yes, so um, social media is a great amplifier um, of people's both pro-social tendencies but also anti-social uh, tendencies. Yes. Um, and so it's social, but it, it doesn't say whether it's pro-social or anti-social. Um, and in Taiwan, what we've seen uh, is that uh, it tends to uh, reward mostly the more uh, extreme voices so that they amplify more. So there may only be five divisive ideas uh, among all the possible ideas uh, that concern the society. But social media, um, when it's done in a design in a anti-social way, tend to over amplify the voices of the divisive and give less uh, room for the consensual. But how, how does like, social media work in, in Taiwan? Does it work a little bit differently from like other countries or mm -hmm. is it like same same? Well, in Taiwan, uh, because we have broadband as a human right, so no matter where you are in Taiwan, you have 10 megabits per second at 15 euros per month. And because of that, everybody is uh, very much into video producing and video uh, sharing. Um, and so I would say that it is not only uh, text-based, a lot of it is image and video-based. Uh, and people very easily start their own broadcast stations. Um, just sharing their, their views through live streaming. So there's a lot more live streaming going on compared to other jurisdictions, mostly because it's unlimited data for everyone. Um, and I would also say that the use of end-to-end -end encryption um, is maybe more in Taiwan uh, through a app called Line. Uh, a lot of people is using Line for end-to-end -end encryption, not only among individuals, but also among groups of people. Um, but what does this mean if you have like more like streaming and not only and text like yes, yes, social media does, does this has an impact then like for example on all those topics like fake news that it's like you have less fake news because everybody's like more streaming because it's like mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. less possible to be mm -hmm. if you stream. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays it's also easy to synthesize video, so it's called deep oh, yeah, fake. Yeah, so, yeah, I forgot about deep fake. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's so, not yeah. exactly like um, it, it's harder. So the, the problem yeah. is bigger. The problem actually become bigger because uh, people uh, would believe it more if they have seen a picture uh, or a video uh, as compared to text. Text is open for interpretation, but image is usually. Um, very final in its presentation. Um, so I would say that it actually amplified uh, especially the feeling of, of anger, uh, anger and helplessness. If uh, people show you an image uh, of, for example, I don't know, there was this image um, that says um, um, during the Hong Kong protest, um, the payment uh, for the rioters yeah. um, is such that uh, at most they pay up to 20 million um, dollars, I think renminbi, um, for uh, murdering a police, which is a piece of disinformation. 
But well, is this also something which went viral in Taiwan? Yes, and and um, like with and that was a photo, and this is a kind of comic drawing uh, that uh, calls for um, basically um, so-called suicide or, or suicides. Um, and again, this is a piece of disinformation. There was no such. Um, event going on in, in Hong Kong, you can very easily see because it's not spelled in Cantonese, uh, it's spelled in Han Pinyin, which actually no Hong Kong protesters would use. Um, but uh, unless you are. Also, also you mean um, Han Pinyin, it's like in Mandarin, not Cantonese. Yeah, well, it, it's written in Cantonese mm -hmm. um, to make it look like uh, Cantonese. But actually, it uses Han Pinyin, which is Mandarin Pinyin, uh, actually only using PRC because in Taiwan we use the Zhuyin system. Uh, and it also got some Cantonese more small. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, but what I'm trying to say is that if it's only this text, it would not be as provoking anger as a drawing or maybe a uh, synthesized image or a video. So is like the fake news problem bigger in Taiwan because people are using like more picture and more video? I would say it incites more emotion, but then uh, it also makes clarifications more important. So the website that I'm showing you here is actually clarifying this as false. And because they can cite from the video and from the images, it also makes clarification more um, pertinent to the message, because you can then compare where the image came. It was from the Reuters, but they changed the caption, and so on. And, and what does this mean like, for the upcoming election? I mean, like everybody is extensively using social media, mm -hmm. not like the people from the Hans party, but mm -hmm. also Thai. Everybody is using social mm -hmm. media. And we, does this also mean that like the whole like presidential elections are going to be um, quite mm -hmm partial and also angry because I mean we have like those people from Hans party who are accusing the opposite of fake news mm -hmm. and also vice versa mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I get the impression that it's quite mm -hmm. heated. Mm -hmm. Well um, we're a young democracy so elections are always heated uh, but I think social media is unique in that it allows the uh, turning the helpless anger into a uh, outrage very easily by clicking share. So whenever people feel anger, uh, they may not have the mental capacity to check the veracity of the, of the image or video, but they can very easily turn it into something more positive subjectively by clicking share and uh, sending a message of outrage so that people are angry about the same thing together instead of an individual anger. And so that tend to spread, yes. Okay, sure. So, um, so anger, as I was just showing you, was also equally people devote their time uh, to fact checking, uh, to committed to respond to each and every of those uh, messages within uh, 60 minutes. Uh, I think the deadline from each ministry is two hours. So within two hours, they have to produce uh, the clarification cards that are also visual, that within two hours, um, within like 200 words, at, at least two pictures, that clarifies this matter. Mm -hmm. well, how, how does this work? This is like one, one of, um, one of the, the means how you protect against um, fake news. How does this work? Like, mm -hmm. that, that every ministry is like only having a look at um, like fake the trending The trending disinformation. Are they just like the trending ones or just mm -hmm. the trending ones concerning their ministry? Of course, they can only respond to the ones yeah. concerning their ministry. But the trending one also uh, is a volunteer basis. People either uh, report it uh, on the line system uh, directly to a public dashboard. It's like flagging a spam email. Um, or people can just uh, work with the town fact check center and say, I see this trending, would you like to check it? But one way or another, it would end up uh, on the uh, ministry's pellet and they will look at whether it's a uh, intentional harmful and truth. Uh, and if so, uh, within two hours, usually within 60 minutes now, they will roll out uh, this 
to picture cards that are less than 200 words and easy to grasp and are humorous. And for example, but like so the like the people from the ministry they don't themselves do the monitoring, the people are doing the monitoring and then, then they are responding. Yes. Do you have like a good example from the past? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is actually a very humorous one. This uh, is clarifying a rumor that says perming your hair many times a week will be subject to a million dollar fine starting next week. And that's not true. Um, and then the payload, which is less than 200 but says, um, I may be bought now, says a younger version of the Prime Minister, uh, but I will not punish people with hair. Uh, and then the fine print says, what we've done is introducing labeling requirement for hair products starting July 2021. And then a uh, Prime Minister, as he looks now, says, However, while uh, premiering your hair many times a week will not damage your pocket, it will damage your hair. Uh, when serious, you may end up looking like me. Okay, so and then, but it's then also like approved by the minister himself and like his so, team. And of course, the image would have to be pretty clear yeah. uh, to use. So it's actually a very tight pipeline. You can think of it like a kind of sitcom producer, a mimetic engineer team that can very uh, easily and swiftly put the um, clarification messages from the ministry into this mimetic packaging so that it goes viral. So now um, if you, um, for example, search on search engine, um, like the, the keywords that we just showed, um, or something like that, um, then you will actually, the first few hits will be this clarification messages and its derivatives. Okay. Um, can we um, like also like have a closer look at this picture? Yes, sure. I, I, anyway, I will go through the whole thing again, just with my camera on the screen, so that we can um, have anyway. uh -huh. just remember um, it. Sure. Um, so like, like after it. that we are doing it afterwards, or shall we already do it? No, I would say afterwards, okay. and we don't interrupt it. Okay. Okay, I'll just make a note that then we have sure, um, yeah, like the, the, hair, the hair thing, huh? The hair thing. Yeah, the hair thing, the Hong Kong thing, maybe your poems in the beginning, just okay. that you have a bit of close ups of everything. Yes. And you can yeah. cut the trick. And um, how many people are doing this for you? Of like five, I, I read some of five people. Mm -hmm. or? Um, yeah, um, so they're not doing it for me, they're doing it for their minister. Oh, for the minister yeah. yeah, so I, I'm mostly just um, advocating okay. this way of a swift, open, and structured response, but the actual uh, coaching. Is by our spokesperson, uh, Bulasio Daka. Um, and in each ministry, um, they have a team of five people or more. But five is a kind of basic. And do you also have uh, another example? For example, something which is like also connected to the elections? I, I would say uh, one of the important things is that our clarifications are not fact checks, mm -hmm. it's our, just our clarification, like a mm -hmm. piece of puzzle mm -hmm. uh, from the administration. So we don't directly deal with election. Those mm -hmm. would be from, um, you know, mm -hmm. Han or Tsai or Song's oh, office. They, but they are doing it themselves. They are doing it themselves, but uh, what, that's not our purview. Our purview is come on to the administrative functions, but we're not doing it for the elections. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so when it comes to, to fake news, um, this is like one of the main tools mm -hmm. you have or Humor. Are like yeah. other other tools? Well, and also uh, when I said the Tower Fact Check Center, actually every piece of fact check that they do, uh, that they combine information from various different sources, uh, for example this one, uh, the Hong Kong one, once they clarify it as uh, not correct, it's actually uh, dialed down uh, on Facebook. Yeah. So Facebook, when people share this piece of um, like disinformation, uh, they will no longer reach people's newsfeed that easily. You'll have to scroll two hours to see it. Uh, it's exactly like moving a piece of junk mail uh, from your inbox to your spam box so that people by default don't look into it. But it's not a takedown. Mm -hmm. So if you look specifically for it, it's still there. Okay. And how big is like in general trolling a problem in Taiwan? 
also especially when it comes um, to to China and foreign mm -hmm. countries. It's trolling if you mean the uh, automatic or semi-automatic posting of messages uh, yeah, for example, to yes. elicit a negative emotion, you know, uh, to, to distract like from public discussion. You know, yeah, then, then we, we have evidence, of course, there are um, hundreds of thousands of fake accounts. For example, on the Hong Kong protests alone, there's 200,000 uh, fake accounts on Twitter designed to troll. Uh, discussions and they are all semi-automated from the same block of computers within the PRC mm -hmm. that doesn't need to bypass the Grey Firewall. They are blessed by the mm -hmm. Grey Firewall to directly troll Twitter and Facebook and Google. And are there also such trolling farms when it comes to questions concerning Taiwan? I think so. Um, I think there's um, just recently um, people discovered that there's a set of content farms that uh, republishes uh, in traditional Chinese uh, language script uh, whatever the simplified Chinese messages that's pushed out by the PRC, Weibo or something kind of just instantly or even before uh, they post uh, in simplified Chinese. And so that's kind of a, a instant translation uh, of the messages as pushed out. For example, this Hong Kong one, which is a good example because it's also posted on the Weibo of of the Chang'an Sword, uh, which is the official way for, uh, of the Zhongyang uh, Zhengfa Wei uh, in the PRC. And so it's not uh, merely spreading this um, in Taiwan, it's rather taking something of a kind of official propaganda uh, and uh, localize it in Cantonese, in traditional Chinese, uh, and spread it uh, in the social media. But is there something when it comes like to to quote, like propaganda um, which is really targeted, let's say, for the Taiwanese market mm -hmm. by China? For the Taiwanese market. Oh, yeah, like for the Taiwanese market. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so who would buy this? <laughs> well, maybe in a different sense of buying. Uh, <laughs> um, right. So um, as you can see, there are many uh, pertaining only to uh, Taiwan messages. Some of them are not disinformation, they're rather mild information. So what's, what's for you the, the difference between disinformation and mild information? So disinformation is um, untruth with the intention to do harm. And mild information is in information spread with intention to do harm. They may or may not be true, but they are intended to be framed in a way to do harm. So, uh, for example, there was a, a protest uh, back in 2016, actually, uh, and there was a kind of real video of that protest, but it's almost three years ago. But then there's a reframed message of such a protest uh, as if it's happening right now. And what's like the message behind it? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's trying to discredit the institutional media. The framing is there was such a, a very um, loud protest in front of the presidential office building, but the media turned a deaf and blind eye to it. Mm -hmm. So that was the framing. And did, for example, such kind of a message, did this get to the people or to the Taiwanese? Or, um... Well, of course, it's only after it's shared by many people mm -hmm. do they get flooded uh, to the attention of the Taiwan Fact Checking Center. So they, of course, kind of by default have to reach at least some volunteers mm -hmm. that flag this for the Town Fact Checking Center to, to get example, noticed. For example, this one got um, 160 and um, when, so when it's reported yeah. to the TFC. Yeah. So it's maybe only within one hour. Mm -hmm. But while it's spreading, the TFC is in parallel doing its fact checking work. Mm -hmm. And then it comes like to this whole fact checking work. How many um, cases? Um, are you people or like the people from the other ministry and um, dealing with then it comes like to, to China and Taiwan? Is it like a lot or? Well, if you mean uh, China as in kind of um, the, the um, land, the territory uh, that they currently govern, then there's many about, uh, for example, this was about an epidemic um, in um, I think rat, and there's also a kind of 
uh, virus in, in pigs um, and, and so on. So there's some, of course, concerning to that uh, area of their jurisdiction, uh, but I would say it's not uh, a majority because all what they um, want to do is to serve the sport. So a local topic actually makes more sense to do so. For example, this one um, is a disinformation uh, about um, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen and a dialogue uh, with a allegedly um, a small vendor uh, from a kind of change the name from Li Keqiang to Tsai Ing-wen and respread on social media. Oh, this was also one of the first really trended. Yes, before. yes, mm -hmm. trended before the TFC uh, looked at it. Um, do you have an example? What's the post which trended the, the most? No, I don't. Maybe you can ask the TFC. Mm -hmm. Because it, it depends on how early they intervened. Because once they published this as, uh, as a disinformation, as false, it will stop the virality. The virality, uh, as determined by Facebook, will be dialed down to less than one-tenth of the previous. So the earlier this um, fact check appears, the um, slower it will trend afterwards. And so uh, we could never um, predict like what would happen if not for this fact check. Mm -hmm. But can one say that China is trying to interfere via social media um, Taiwan? This may be like the election, the general um, point of view of people. Well, we know for sure that they have this hundreds of thousands of fake accounts. And some of them, of course, gets deleted by Twitter and published their metadata corroborated by Facebook and Google. Um, and so just based on the fact that there were uh, this amount of uh, bots or fake accounts that are uh, blessed by the Great Firewall, um, I think it's safe to say that there are some still remaining, even though it's, some of them get suspended. Mm -hmm. So is it a big problem or a not so big problem? Uh, it depends on who you're asking, right? To me, I think, uh, comparatively, it's less a big problem for this election than the previous one. Why? Because the previous election is also a referendum. And so there's many different places where you can sow discord. Basically, each and every referendum topic is one in which that disinformation or information can operate. But for this election, because we've decoupled the referendums uh, with the presidential elections, so there's less uh, room for this information to navigate. It's not to say that they are not serious, it's just to say the surface of this information is narrow at this time. Do we have this about like conversion? Okay. Um, I don't have your question. If you want it, maybe uh, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but in, in general, it is a problem of like fake news and malinformation, disinformation for from China. So what mm -hmm. what can you do against it? So I think I think working with journalists is by far the, the best way and to revitalize people's participation in journalism. Because as I said, everybody is a YouTuber, um, a live streamer. So um, it's not just about media literacy, which is about uh, readers' literacy or viewers' literacy, but about media competence. Like when everybody is a media broadcaster, uh, what kind of competence do they need uh, to make sure that this kind of viral, angry messages don't spread, but rather something that's more humorous, there's more to the point, and so on, may spread easily. And that is the kind of competence um, education uh, can play a large role. And also we see a lot of institutional media now working with uh, like social media, as well as a lot of uh, participation from the volunteer uh, group to voluntarily type in all the presidential candidates' um, public speech into transcripts validating its correctness and then do a fact check to each and every part of uh, what the presidential candidate has said. And just by uh, participating in the process, it shows everyone how institutional media does fact checking, source checking, and journalism in China, which is why we always say this information in Taiwan, not fake news, because um, unfortunately in Taiwan, news and journalism translate to the same word. 
and so there's no way to say fake news in Mandarin without offending journalists. Was it, was it again, so um, in, in Mandarin, it's, it's like the same word. Yeah, so news is Xinwen, and journalism is Xinwen Uh The Department of Journalism is Xinwen Si, uh, and the journalist is Xinwen Bong Zuo Zhe. Jia Xinwen, which would also uh, describe, of course, um, a um, fake journalist, fake journalism. Uh, but journalism, by definition, is the opposition of fake, because it's a process um, to um, determine um, reality, if not um, truth, but at least reality from different perspectives. And so by combining these two together uh, in Mandarin, it is a affront to journalists also. Uh, and because my parents were both journalists, out of filial piety, I cannot say that. Ah, okay, so, so it's okay, it's information and then... Uh, so, but this information, Jia has no such problem because it pertains to the intentional harm by untruths. Of course, a journalist would never do that. But, so in the end, like, the main tool is fact-checking. And the fact-checking mm -hmm. can be, like, done partly by, by, by the government, yeah. can be, like, by, by, done by media, mm -hmm. can be um, done by, volunteers. by people, volunteers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. But also the fact-checking, the product of fact-checking, need to be clarified in the sense that are humorous, that it stands alone. Why has it to be humorous? humorous. So be it's catchy or...? Well, first that, yes, it's catchy, that it can spread uh, more than the disinformation, because joy spreads further than anger. But also, if you feel a helplessness uh, in the anger, humor turns it into joy and that blocks the psychological pathway that turns it into outrage. And so people actually have more mental capacity to look into the thing together rather than uh, being in a very divisive mood. When, when, when did Taiwan start with this whole... Um... Humor thing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, this whole humor thing and uh -huh. like, humor against uh, uh -huh. like... I can say that, against like fake news, mm -hmm. disinformation. Yeah. Well, you, you can, because you're a journalist, <laughs> right? It's the, exactly, you can say it. <laughs> it's one of those shibboleth <laughs> words. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is it like one year ago, yeah. two years ago, or when did Taiwan start? Well, and so I remember that I uh, started proposing this idea, I think early 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I outlined uh, using my own experience in working to counter spam. Uh, that was almost 20 years ago. Um, I proposed that we uh, keep it uh, swift, open, and structured. And the structure uh, is a mimetic structure. That is to say, to make it humorous so that it spreads faster. So that was the an idea that I raised uh, in the cabinet meeting. But it's uh, gradually realized by spokespersons Xu Guoyong and Nan Hula Siu Daka in the past couple of years. So it only took also, do you think like this has already changed a lot during the... I would say so, I would say so, especially for this election, mm -hmm. because of the surface is more narrow, um, the referendums is out of the picture. I think um, a lot of this information necessarily then pertains to uh, the administrative functions, and so the clarification from the ministries play a larger role uh, on this, because the referendum agenda are, are set by the people. Uh, often this information pertaining to a referendum, there's nothing a ministry can say. But the uh, presidential candidates are representative. And so they, uh, their platforms, of course, all pertain to administrative functions. And so these are something that ministry has something to say. Okay, so also the people already got like, more educated mm -hmm. and... Uh, yes, and more aware that this is going mm -hmm. on. So, you know, quite, quite a fast process. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have imagined that it's... Does it change so fast? Well, and, People and, change so fast. Yeah, I would also like to credit, for example, the line uh, mm -hmm. media system, uh, where they have a dashboard mm -hmm. uh, that just showed the latest trending clarifications. Mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, arranged to work with many different fact-checkers, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the executive UN, uh, the administration, so that uh, they give a section of their popular media uh, called the line today uh, and they can show how many uh, every day how many people flagged messages 
uh, as this information for fact checking and uh, how many people eventually got around to share or read the clarifications instead of the disinformation. Mm -hmm. So it shows kind of this, this pipeline. And I um, am uh, grateful, I think, that uh, online today, um, if you can look at the um, top news, um, it's below uh, the gossiping and entertainment, mm -hmm. but then it's the second section after the gossiping and entertainment, the clarifications for rumors. Um, and because of that, um, it's very funny. Uh, and then after that, it's world news and, and social issue, uh, like yeah, everyday issues and, and online video and so on. But it's good that we're on the second uh, section, the clarifications. I uh, sometimes tell our ministerial colleagues that that's because we're not funny enough. That's why we're on the second section. Uh -huh. if, if we're funny enough, we'll be above entertainment and gossip. Yeah. Um, do you have an example of like the? It can be like from from your ministry, which really went trending because it was so funny. Okay. Yes. Um, I can show you a, a short. So there you have like done you outdone yourself. Uh -huh. uh, I'll show you a short video uh, that I did. Um, so, like, if you just talk about virality. Um, this video uh, went somewhat viral. It has more than um, fourteen, um, yeah, well, one hundred and forty k views. But it's also syndicated by various different um, um, fan pages uh, that uh, all together bring it, I think, uh, to more than one million views. Um, and and it's just a very simple thing. So uh, I can show you first the original. And then the remixes. Also, I have I have seen like the you, you seen this. Also, not this yeah. one, just the five minutes five minute interview on MDW. That's the five yeah. minute one. Yeah, right. So so the, the first few seconds so went by. Hong Kong have been protesting for democracy and against what they perceive as a growing influence by the mainland uh, government from China. As an official from Taiwan, an island which Beijing considers a breakaway territory. Uh, how do you view these protests? The breakaway was at the Neolithic age, I believe. So um, just that part went viral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and people started uh, remixing and adding a lot of uh, kind of rap culture to it and things like that. Uh, do you have an example yeah. of like uh, a... the remix? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the first remix was from Taiwan Wong Power. Which is basically just captioning and, and mm -hmm. just highlighting that particular perspective. And that also went um, somewhat viral. Um, and um, I think there's then a lot of photoshopped uh, versions uh, started to, to come. Uh, Uh, and then the mainstream media took notice of it, uh, and then it went viral again on mainstream media. Um, and let me show you the, the remix. Um, So you can see, uh, for example, a, a Photoshop uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with glasses, um, and then um, then it shows uh, the fan page, uh, the mimetic engineer that's responsible for it, 
uh, and then of course then we can go into here uh, and then look at how the Photoshop uh, went and uh, then we'll see that um, people are actually then supplying the Neolithic geographic um, information and explaining how exactly the plate tectonics use. So as I said, humor brings um, a curiosity in people. And creativity. And, and creativity. And, and people actually wanted to learn how the breakaway exactly happened 8,500 years ago. And when it comes to this other platform, um, join the government and TW. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, as I understand, it's also an initiative. Um, yes. This one. Yeah. Genau. Mm -hmm. What I like the most, um, let's say, the, the most popular topics nowadays in this platform. Mm -hmm. well, we can look. Uh, we don't have to guess. So um, from the petition part of it. Uh, there's of course also regulations and budget, but the petition part, which is more um, popular, I guess, um, and you can search in it, and you can easily sort it uh, by the number of petitions. Um, and then you can see all the historically trending ones, or just the newer trending ones. In the newer trending ones, you will see that animal right and animal welfare is uh, by far the, the largest topic. For example, this one concerns uh, larger dogs and I guess very large cats uh, and whether there, there are friendly uh, transportation options in the Taiwan rail system uh, for them. Um, why do you think um it like gets popular because yeah, it's cute. It's cute, not yeah. because um, Taiwanese have such a special relationship to cats and dogs. I mean, even your mm -hmm. president mm -hmm. is posing as a cat. That's our first our family. Arms. That's oh. our first family. Mm -hmm. yeah, you cannot corrupt them, mm -hmm. except very briefly by catnips. But yeah, you're, they're corrupted. So we Taiwanese have a really special relationship to, to cats and dogs. Yeah, well, there's also a petition going on on um, companion and birds in uh, public transportation options. Um, so, and also one on animal welfare, um, seeking alternatives to uh, competitions by weight uh, for, for uh, pigs raised for ceremonial ritual purposes. Um, and so animal welfare, I would say, is by far the largest. And there's also um, many ones concerning to um, the right to uh, access nature. For example, this one is about amateur fishing um, in the harbors. And there is also a similar topic that people participated in uh, mountaineering and hiking. Uh, because previously, these were forbidden. The sea and the mountains were forbidden for ordinary people to access without permit uh, because it is a martial law legacy. Um, maybe the mountains are dangerous because people um, at that time thought there would maybe guerrilla warfare going on uh, if you allow too many people to access the deeper mountains and so on, which is no longer a problem now. And so we're systemically using the joint platform to uh, engage people um, uh, relaxing the rules uh, and increasing the self-regulation of mountaineering and um, amateur fishing and all the sea activities and mountain activities. And how successful um, how, how successful is like this initiative? Pretty in successful. The, yeah. Uh, I, you, you mean how have it also in the, like, um, affected policy change? Yeah. Yeah. So of all the cases that we uh, work with directly. Uh, almost 60 cases now, uh, half of which mm, resulted in decisive regulatory or policy change. The other half um, get maybe something different, but I would say not necessarily was. For example, there was one petition, uh, well, nice number, 8,000 people strong, that says Taiwan should change the time zone to GMT plus nine for some reason. Um, and then uh, there's an equally strong petition also 8,000 people strong, that says we should remain GMT plus 8 uh, without changing to GMT plus 9. So obviously, it, you cannot please those petition subjects. For example, also if it comes to China, I've seen like several um, petitions, for example, ones were saying we won't have like, a department um, against China, in, like interference, um, 
like on the joint platform? I, I haven't uh, yes, seen that. Yes, I think. Oh, you did this it? one. Okay. Do you have a keyword or something that I can search for? Because it needs 5,000 petitions for uh, for it to raise to our uh, monthly meeting of um, participation officers. Colleague has sent it. It's, um, are all they happen? Oh, I just them. I think those are the ones which haven't. Been oh yeah, it's the it's the a star flag. Yes. So yeah, that's that's a really good one um, because uh, you can see uh, how the Ministry of Justice answered. I think this one is Geno is the flag, and this one was um, something else. Um, Classical text. I think. Ah, Geno, this was about the. Um, so yeah, the, the flat one is, is actually very, very nice because we actually changed the regulations around the e-petition because of this. When in its first incarnation, you can see the response from the Ministry of, uh, uh, of Justice, right? That says, uh, that says this, um, according to the constitutional ruling, uh, number three to eight, um, the constitutional um, definition of the original territory is a um, is It's a political question of the uh, of the most serious level, and so it is outside the judicial branch and indeed the Minister of Justice purview. It, it should not be. Um, done by the court or indeed the Minister of Justice to make such a decision. And so they basically say that this is something that concerns uh, a presidential, um, e exclusively presidential purview. And uh, it's outside of the administration, uh, the ministries to tackle it. And right after that, this is I think the one that you were uh, referring to. And right after that, we changed the regulation saying that the petition must pertain only to the ministerial functions within the administration. So saying that um, issues pertain to diplomacy, to defense, mm -hmm. that are specifically presidential purviews, uh, is not for the joint platform's administrative section to uh, deal with. How, how do I have a... So this is the yeah. administration, can I, how do and I, this is how the do I National search? Auditing Office, and this is the um, When I have like a search, then I want to search Yeah, something. sure, sure, we just yeah. type in here. Yeah. 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 You know, I think I searched for, it yeah. was one of them. Oh, do you remember we had like, we looked for, um, like the people and suggested they want to have like a ministry and about like this information. This one. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. So again, it's rejected because um, it is the presidential purview. Ah, uh, it's because of this. Uh, yeah, there, there's, a, a clause, this there's a clause. There's a clause. Also, yeah. this one was. Really right, so okay. basically, we look uh, systemically at what is the presidential purview that the administration should not uh, touch uh, because those are political questions pertaining to the president. And we said that uh, it is basically uh, issues pertaining uh, to the Chinese continent, uh, issues pertaining to foreign affairs, uh, issues pertaining to national defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the things that uh, you can write to the president about, but uh, it is beyond the ministers to respond. Uh -huh. And because the minister cannot respond, and the e-petition calls for ministerial response, um, so it is falling outside of the purview of the ministerial part, the administration part of the joint platform. Okay. Um, I suggest because it's already um, 9.50 yeah. and we start with the shooting of um, um, the, the, the screens. Yeah, Did the you screens. need the last answer, I think? Um, yeah, I can say it again. Um, I think because mm -hmm. the, the reason we have it already before okay. when he explained it about the, the flag thing. Yeah, it's the same answer. 
Really? Ja, genau. Just before. Um, or two before. If you think it's important, then just be careful. Let's do it again because in, in the end, uh, I was well, more focusing on your hands okay, and your. Then let's say, um, how can I frame it then? Like not every um, question, uh, not every um, like petition um, will be uh, will be subject to this five thousand signature collecting. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. we have one people want to have like a a new ministry or department against um, China um, mm -hmm. interference. That's right. Why, for example, um, this wasn't approved. Mm -hmm. So right after the original petition about the flag, um, we took a systemic view at what are the presidential purviews uh, for political questions. And these are issues concerning um, the Chinese continent, the foreign policy, as well as national defense. And because these are by constitution, Uh, something that the president have a say, but neither the uh, ministers nor the administration have a say about. And because our petition system basically demand only responses from ministers, so we've changed the regulation pertaining to the petition says, if we propose something that is outside of the purview of the administration, then we would not enter the collection stage of the petition. We're good. Yeah, also, then let's start with like um, yes, perhaps um, the screens of the like, joint government, and I hope I can like decipher my um, screen. Mm -hmm. I think what was really good was the very first one already with the. Yeah, the yeah, okay. Then you just mm -hmm. And this is like the the yeah the original one. That's the one the from twenty seventeen. Yeah. yeah. And like the important thing is this yes. that it's a like yes, a response. Yes, it's a political question. So um, here uh, is where it uh, cites the constitutional court's ruling, saying that this is a uh, major political question, and according to the separation of powers constitutional idea, the branches uh, are not um, in line. Uh, to answer this directly, neither the judicial branch can determine a political question directly, nor should the Ministry of Justice do so. And can you go like to to the also then to the top again, so you see that the to the top again, where you see the like proposal. The, the, yeah, the proposal. Okay, here is the proposal. Or like way up, so we only have like the title. Okay. Right. Or just, just like, like this, yeah, maybe here. Yeah. 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 And so we changed the regulation shortly afterward. Um, okay, and then um, let's go to the hair picture. Oh yeah, the hair picture. Right. So... Um, At this one as well, maybe? The, the protest video? At this At the protest you know, video, yeah. Could you even start it? Mm. Not really. Well, I, I can search for it. No, that's fine. Yeah, but but uh, you can search for it too. Yeah. yeah no, if we didn't but, see it before, then. But it's, it's fact check that spawns. Okay. So okay. Maybe scroll down. Come on, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can show you more videos. But th these are the same. I'm right? just remixed in various different. Yeah, it's fine. I, yeah, record. I don't know if saw that thing. Okay. And um, like the hair? Yeah, the hair thing. Right, so maybe it's it's good if I just Google again. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then we'll switch to pictures. And then you can see the clarification cards. Can you? These are the two clarification pictures. Uh, one from our premiere. Uh, and one from our deputy premier. Um, and so this is our deputy premier getting a haircut. Um, <clears throat> so maybe they were trying like different uh, ways of tackling this, um, but I think this one went more viral because as you can see, um, this is on the top of the um, search result. Or can you just... Um, Focus on this one. Yeah. Okay, and I can also show the English translation. Oh, yeah. If that works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said this is the English translation, but I didn't translate this part. 
where it says, <laughs> if you perm your hair, you would damage your hair. <laughs> And the poem. And the poem, yes. Also the Hong Kong. Uh, the, Hong the Hong Kong, Hong Kong. yes. Yeah, what, what would you like um, from the Hong Kong one? I mean, um, we had like the, the example of the like the Chinese poetry like the twenty thousand. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yes, yes. All right, so uh, let me just search for one. Yeah, there's. Quite a few Hong Kong ones in the Telefect Check Center. It's very much trendy. Um, yes, so, so that was the picture. And scroll to the picture again. Okay. So that you don't see it and then back to the picture. Okay, okay, just a second. So also another picture. Okay. And then back to the picture. Okay. Um what do I have on my list? I have like your poems. One more time. Okay, so just from the very beginning. Like this is maybe that we have to not true. And then it shows why it's not true. And then it shows the picture. And then it shows the source of the picture. Mm -hmm. And then it shows the kind of false flag um, comic of this uh, supposedly call for suicide. But then it written in Cantonese that are not really right. And Spelled also incorrectly using how you pin uh, Okay, and when you actually join the group, you'll see that it's mostly spun. So <laughs> somebody, somebody probably trolled. <laughs> okay. Get on then. Yeah. Okay. What is the poems? Get on the poems. Yes. So. Um, the first. The first one. one. Yeah. So I'll just go through it. Maybe it's easier for the camera. I'm reading again. Okay. When we see the Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we see that a singularity may be new, let us always remember the plurality is here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the new. Yeah. This, this is, is the this new one. Is, the, uh, I just yeah. wrote yesterday. So. Yeah. That's for us. Yeah. It's, wow. a, it's a fresh. It's actually for for you because I was thinking about Switzerland actually, and and how you know this transcultural republic of citizens is a pretty good description of people from different cultures coming together by direct democracy. Say it? Yes. Okay. Sure. So, a uh, whirling ocean, beautiful islands, a transcultural republic of citizens. Or maybe in Mandarin. <laughs> all right, no, no, it's fine. I think how, English is How good. long did you think about this poem? Uh, just just all, just all day yesterday. All, all day yesterday. Uh, but the, so the, this first, first, eight, first eight words uh, are, are uh, commonplace, like everybody in Taiwan above my age or even a bit under my age learns it from the, uh, I think it's high school textbook. Um, because it's um, part of uh, the, pre, uh, the foreword of Taiwan Tongshi, the, the Taiwan history. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so it talks about it on the ocean to get alive. And so what I really did yesterday was just to write those eight characters. Right, so um So literally uh, Republic of Citizens between flowers. And I think we have all, and also I would like to have, if you could like also film a few like of her dashes, for example. Um, okay. So okay. we get a little bit the impression, yes, it is a mm -hmm. digital, digital workplace. Um, yeah. Digital workplace. Mm -hmm. Of course, the metrics thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that nuts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All is just good for you. Mm -hmm. So are we on time? Yeah, we are on time. Okay. okay.